Hi, welcome back to episode three of The Master Trainer, the series of short films that we've put together to enable you to be the best you can be. My name's Harry, I'm the director of ITOL, and uh, it's my privilege to be your host and guide throughout this series. Um, if you haven't seen the previous two episodes, I recommend that you go back to have a look at them, simply because it gives a context to what we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of the series. And uh, it will just help you to follow a train of thought that we're trying to, de trying to develop. And um, secondly, before we get into it, can I thank you so much for your comments and uh, the things that you've said um, for the past uh, two episodes? Uh, I've really appreciated them, and uh, I would encourage you to continue that conversation that we're having at the end of this um, episode as well. In the last episode, if you remember, we looked at the process of training that is called the systematic training cycle, and we identified the four elements of that, of uh, identifying training need, designing something to meet the need, delivering what you've designed, and evaluate the whole process. And if you remember, we bolted onto that the thing that keeps training rooted into reality, and that is the, the um, organizational goals, the, what the requirements are of the organization. And that's where we left it last time. This time, I want to move on slightly and start to open up the whole area of, of training need, identifying and analyzing training need. Now, I don't pr propose uh, on this short film to go into um, a huge amount of depth on it. One, because we don't have time, but two, because we do have uh, in the Institute a home study certificate devoted to the subject of training needs analysis. We have a range of home study certificates devoted to a lot of a lot of things. As they uh, come into this series, I'll highlight them for you. But if you wanted to navigate to our website, itol.org, then you would be able to find your way through professional development in the menu through to home study, where there are loads of tools and techniques to do with training needs analysis. But what I wanted us to think about uh, today is, I suppose, the bigger picture, the kind of things that we need to think about around training needs analysis, maybe slightly before we get into training needs analysis, just to prepare a foundation for us. And I'd like to give you a visual to help us uh, arrive at that. So if you can uh, visualize a vertical line running from top to bottom, and at the top of that line uh, there is high, at the bottom there is low, and that line represents performance. And that, if you like, is is the aim, is the goal of where we want to be. We want to move from low performance through the vertical line up to high performance. And as a, a trainer, as a master trainer, that, if you like, is our, is, our, is our north star. That is our guiding light. The question arises, though, is the, so, you know, what level of performance should we be thinking about? It's quite unrealistic, isn't it, to think about perfect performance. In other words, the highest part of that, of that vertical. There is a, a level below that because perfection will never be achieved. So what is the level of performance we should be thinking about? Well, I want to suggest to you this, that if you thought about the most experienced worker, then what standard of work would you expect from them? And I would place that as a horizontal away from the vertical. We would call that the EWS, the Experienced Worker Standard. And that is the standard that will be our goal, our aim, in our training process. That's what we want our learners to achieve. So once we've got that in front of us, we can then start thinking about our potential learners, about the people who um, are, are involved in the work. And I'd like to give you two separate people. We've first of all got person A. And person A is uh, a good worker, and we've looked at his performance, and we can see that his performance comes a long way below the EWS, the Experienced Worker Standard. And so it's obvious to us quite, um, you know, just as a cursory view, it's obvious to us that there is a gap there that needs filling. That difference between the Experienced Worker Standard and the current level of performance we call the performance gap. And our aim will be to, to fill that gap. 
we have another individual. We'll call them individual B. And we look at their performance. And their performance actually is much greater. It's better. It's of a higher quality than person A. But still, they fall below the EWS. And so they, too, have a performance gap. Now, what that leads us to believe is we have two people, really, who need training. Well, no. <laughs> that's what people would lead you to believe. That's often the requests for training that you get. But if we just um, followed through on what people want us to do, we can actually come dreadfully unstuck. Because, you know, it's a secret that we know in the profession. And the secret is this, that quite often training fails. And it fails normally because the wrong people are being trained in the wrong stuff at the wrong time in the wrong place. And that happens simply because we don't ask the right questions. We don't investigate before we embark on the training process. So the question still hangs in the air. We have a performance gap. How on earth are we going to fill it? Well, if you remember in episode one, we talked about the areas of change that we should be looking at. Did you remember the acronym BASC? Behavior, attitude, skill, and knowledge. So the first thing we need to ask is, is there a recognizable deficiency in any one of those four areas? Is there a deficiency in knowledge or skill? Or is the behavior way off what's needed? Now, if we can see that there is a deficiency in those areas, and that, um, that analysis, if you like, applies to person A, then we have a situation where maybe we should think about training a person A. Because don't forget, we have not embarked upon a training needs analysis yet. But person A is prime material to conduct a thorough training needs analysis with. If we turn our attention to, to person B, and we ask the same kind of questions, is there a deficiency in, in behavior, attitude, skill, and knowledge, and we can't actually see one, there is something else going on with them, then I would suggest to you that we do not train that person because we do not know what we're going to train. And in reality, you know, there are, there are a number of reasons why we can have a performance gap that don't have anything to do with training. There's a few of them here. First of all, there may be a problem around task clarity. The person is not very clear about the performance standards that's required of them. They, they could find obstacles in their way, imagined physical or procedural barriers that stop them moving forward. Here's an interesting one. They could be rewarded for failure. In other words, they can't do the job properly, but they find the reward for that is they get an easy life because somebody else takes over, does the job for them, and they get out of it. So they get rewarded for failure. They don't have proper feedback is another one. Um, there may be a mismatch between them and the role they're asked to do. And so there are reasons why um, there is a gap in performance. And I would suggest to you that if we don't see uh, a deficiency in those four areas, we should say no this person is not eligible for training. There may be a performance gap, but that is something that we should take up with their line manager or their team supervisor or, or whoever. And so what I'm uh, suggesting and asking for you to think about is how we think about performance right at the beginning. It's a very simple process. First of all, we need to um, decide or define, I should say, the desired level of performance. That's the first step. The second step is determine the current level of performance. And the third step is decide the cause of the performance gap. Start off with your EWS. Second step, uh, analyze uh, where the person is against that standard. Thirdly, decide the reason for the gap between the two. And that's the very simple process. And if you follow that process, you'll find that you'll be training the right people, the right stuff, at the right time, in the right place. We have a, a support document that goes with this, so please, underneath where you make your comment, download uh, the document that's there for you. Please leave your comments, uh, tell me what your take is on all of this, and we'll together help each other to be the best we can be. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, thanks for watching that film. I hope there was at least one thing you could take away with you. I want to keep you just for 20 seconds more, because I want you to do something for me. This is a brand new channel, as you know, 
and we've got a load of things that we want to do with you. We've got a ton of stuff we want to give you. The only thing is YouTube needs you to subscribe and they will then allow us to do the stuff we want to do. Red button down to the right hand side, click it, all done. Please subscribe. The sooner you subscribe, the sooner we can do great stuff with you. Thanks.